Raiders, guess what time it is? It's Friday and it's time for another rant. Plarium just released some news about upcoming changes coming to Raid Shadow Legends in the next patch. And this is something that we have been requesting for a very long time. To be more specific, I am talking about the Token Trader. Now, this is a system that they introduced inside of the game around three plus years ago or so. And this was meant uh, to help solve the problem of dupes, right? Yes, you can empower champions. You can use them as faction guardians. But once you're summoning the same freaking fusion champion over and over and over and over and over again till your eyes are freaking bleeding, you have nothing else to do with those dupes. And you might say that this is an issue only for a few people. Well, let me just tell you it's an issue for a lot of people, actually, uh, especially people that have been playing for a very long time. So they released this system as it is completely trash, okay? Um, we thought that maybe this will kind of like refresh every one month or so, change some of the champions. I'm not expecting them to put Sifi and the most OP champions in here, but at least I'm expecting them uh, to show that they actually care about the whole uh, situation that we have in the game with dupes, right? Well, they are changing this system, guys, and uh, we're going to get to it in just a second. We will have some champion rebalance as well. Uh, most likely it will happen on a Monday, if I'm not mistaken, maybe Tuesday. I'm not 100% sure exactly when uh, this patch will drop, probably uh, together with the Fusion. Let me just quickly uh, go over the Champion Rebalance or whatever we have first right here. So the Token Trader tab in the Guardian Ring will be expanded to include two dynamic Champion slots. So which means that those six Trash Champions that you have in there will stay there and then on top of it they're gonna add two more trash champions that they will be there but they will refresh so let me just quickly explain you what that rotation means okay this will be on a rotation and change every six months every six freaking months six months to change two champions in a rotation guys okay and on top of it they're actually boasting how you can purchase this champion multiple times if they are dropping in the store again. So maybe in five years, you're going to be able to get them again. Or maybe they only have four champions on the rotation out of the entire pool, uh, which we don't know what other champions will be in this pool, by the way. But either way, six months is just plain stupid, okay? Pardon my French, but I'm just going to say it as, a, as it is, you know? Six months, man. Put it at least one freaking month per rotation. Two months maximum. Who gives a damn about six months? This is like they're not even trying to fix that system. Now, can you imagine what changes they would do to the market if they're planning to work on it as well, considering what changes they've done to the token trader? Just, just, it's just mind-blowing, okay? So that's basically what's happening with the token trader as well. They're going to add uh, most likely two more champions on top of these ones. Don't get me wrong, yes. Uh, getting a Fushan can be nice, can be helpful. But most likely, the people that are looking to get a Fushan uh, won't have the currency to get a Fushan. They won't have enough dupes from other champions to get a Fushan and actually really elevate their account. Same with Molly Tankard. The rest of these four champions are expired, okay? Like, literally, you can't really do anything with them. Tomb Lord, decent-ish in some areas, but again, uh, expired, right? So they have a big label on their back saying expired in 2020. So leaving all that on the side, heading back over to what they're saying right here. So the price for each dynamic slot will remain unchanged. 3,000 tokens, no matter which champion is on offer. Unlike other slots, you'll be able to purchase the same champion multiple times if they appear across several rotations. But keep in mind that once claimed, the dynamic slot becomes unavailable until the next rotation. So six months for two champions, six months for two more champions, Six months, most likely for the same two old champions, or most likely it's going to be a pool of champions that will include six to eight champions that are pretty much all average, okay? The first two champions to be presented in the rotation are Lennox is the Chosen and the Almighty, the All-Powerful Noble, okay? So that's what you're getting on the very first rotation. Lanakis is a solid champion with an ally attack skill that increases the Termiter on top of that and the ability to apply uh, team-wide buffs. And she can be useful additional to many teams. Uh, what teams except the Tron, the Hydra uh, team? Not sure. 
Noble, on the other hand, is required to empower Ninja. So let's just give them credit for this, okay? They will give you an empowerment for Ninja if you sell six of your dupe legendary champions, okay? So I'll be honest, it's just not worth the trade. The only, uh, the only time when this stuff is worth the trade, if you're planning to empower a champion, that is absolutely going to change the game, okay? Something that is super, super meta. Don't get me wrong. Ninja is super crazy in my Hydra Clan boss. I love my Ninja at plus four. He's a monster. But trading six dupes uh, for an empowerment for Ninja, unless you're a whale or a kraken, is not really gonna cut it, you know? So that's kind of like my take on the token trader. Shame on Plarium for not even putting in 0.1% uh, of effort to actually come up with a better solution for this. Then we have the champion rebalance, guys. This, on the other hand, is actually much better than the token trader update. We're going to get a champion rebalance on Warchief. This is probably, uh, I don't know, the fourth or the fifth rebalance that Warchief gets in his entire lifetime. And we get a bit of a rebalance on Gurgo the Algur, the Void Legendary Champion. So, starting with Warchief, guys. At the moment, uh, the only thing that he can do is be a Provoker. And I'll be very honest, he's not a bad Provoker whatsoever. With A1, he has a chance to Provoke. With A2, Provoke for 3 turns and steals 2 random buffs. That's about it. Nothing else uh, really shines on, uh, on this Champion. But... You can still use him in a couple of different areas as, uh, as he is. I'll be honest, I feel like there were plenty of different legendaries in the game that uh, could benefit more of a buff than Warchief at the moment. But hey, it is just kind of like what I think about it. So, let me just quickly walk you through it. I'm not going to read you what the skills were doing, because that's something that you guys probably uh, know already. So with the A1, now we'll have a chance to place a Provoke debuff with each hit. Before, he was only uh, placing Provoke with one of the hits. Uh, also, each hit will heal Warchief and the most injured ally by 3% of Warchief's max HP. Now, he's a defense-based champion, keep that in mind. With the A2, Warchief will steal all buffs from the enemy, place a Provoke debuff on the whole enemy team, and even place a substantial shield buff on all allies. Now, Warchief's passive was completely reworked, allowing him to boost his own defense based on the number of enemies under Provoke debuffs, and also providing a small but reliable heal based on the damage inflicted to the shield. To seal the deal, he also got a shiny new aura, uh, 60 accuracy in all battle. So, he's definitely in a much better spot than he was before. Uh, he can be a better provoker for the Hydra clan boss, and just in general a better provoker. So... Let me just quickly see what we have on the A2. Steals all buffs and places a Provoke debuff on them for three turns, okay? So I'm not sure if that's gonna be the same and he has a chance to place a... Yeah, okay, so steals one buff from... Uh, steals all buffs from one target, a Provoke for three turns on that target, and he will have a 50% chance to place a Provoke on all enemies for one turn. So very good Provoker for the Hydra Clan boss, right? You're gonna get a bit of a shield, and basically that's pretty much everything that he does. Shield and a bit of a, uh, a lot of a provoke rather than a bit of a provoke, just a little bit of a, of a shield in the Hydra. Uh, I still don't think that is something that's, wow, going to absolutely unvault this champion for uh, all of the players. But if one of you guys are still progressing through the game and you're going to summon him now, uh, it's not as bad because, hey, you're going to have a better provoker. Then we have Gurgo the Ao Gur. With the upcoming rebalance changes, we aim to increase this champion's utility and make him a more formidable force in both PvP and PvE content. His A2 will now remove all buffs from the enemies before placing a freeze. That's actually a nice touch on a Gurgo. The A3 transformed into an, uh, into an AoE attack, placing a defense down on enemies for greater damage potential. That again is not bad at all. His passive now has a chance of landing freeze debuff in response to the enemy's hit and also increase the damage dealt by all allies to frozen enemy. And his aura was changed too. It will now boost ally speed in arena battles. So that's actually pretty nice because uh, he is mainly an arena champion, right? So having a speed aura, I think it would be uh, a pretty nice, uh, a pretty nice uh, change, you know? So 
Talking about this skill, Bone Chiller removes all buffs from all enemies, has a chance to land a freeze and grants an extra turn, which means that you can go with this skill and then move into the A3, which will attack all enemies, will place a defense down on all enemies for two turns and places an extra hit if the target is under a freeze debuff. Double hit, not bad. And the cooldown was reduced. Was the cooldown on what? On um, Was it on six turns without... Uh, without books on that champion, guys. That's pretty, pretty interesting. Let's see. <clears throat> ah, yeah, it was on six turns. So basically, on a five turn cooldown, fully booked. So right now, fully booked will be on a four turn cooldown instead. Um, okay, I'll take, I'll take that change. I'm still not gonna use the champion, but I feel like again the same situation. If any of you guys will pull him early, uh, early on, you're gonna have a. Uh, you're gonna have a better champion, you know? Attacks all enemies, places a defense down debuff on all enemies for two turns, and places an extra hit if the target is under freeze debuff. We talked about that, actually, sorry. And the passive, one hit by an enemy has a 30% chance of placing a freeze debuff on the attacker, and uh, increases the damage inflicted by allies against enemies under a freeze debuff by 25%. So basically, it's kind of like um, cancelling the damage reduction that uh, the freeze will uh, uh, put on the enemies. And you have a 30% arena battle uh, speed aura. Definitely not, uh, not bad for arena, you know. And you can use this champion now for arena if you can build him on a pinpoint set. Uh, or something that will dodge the, uh, the polymorph. Um, if you're not really at that level where you encounter a lot of polymorph. He's actually going to be more useful than he was before. Actually, I would say he's going to be... Uh, more useful than a Madame series because you have a speed aura, you have the freeze, uh, you have the defense down, and you have damage from him as well. So he's much better than a Madame series if you're thinking about it, right? Uh, I do think that he definitely got a pretty solid change, of course, not a god tier change. He won't be coming in the Mera anytime soon, that's for sure. But he's still gonna be uh, way more useful than he was before. So I'm actually pretty, uh, pretty happy with the changes on a Gurgo. You cannot expect. Uh, them to make every single legendary absolutely OP, right? Now, I quickly want to touch a bit more on the token trader situation, and I'm going to show you something that is at least on uh, my account, right? If we're going to go over my legendaries, guys, just as, a, as an idea. Yes, I can empower some of these champions. The main problem is I'm not using these champions, and the number one advice I would give to every single one of you guys out there, do not empower trash champions, at least they are mera champions okay it doesn't matter that you're using that champion in the dragon dungeon do not empower those champions even if you have three four five six copies the reason for it they might be adding a new champion that will get empowered by one of these trash champions and then the champion might be a meta champion so you want to have this trash available to empower a champion that matters not to empower a trash champion with more trash basically okay the main problem guys when you start summoning legendaries uh, you're gonna end up in summoning the same ones over and over again. Like, look at this. I have a Lenaril at plus four. That means five copies. And I have four more copies. That means nine copies of a Lenaril. On top of it, I've already sold two more copies, which means that I had 11 Lenarils in total. Now, it's not because I open one million shards every single week. It's because that's what my account gets on and on and on. In one week, I got three copies of Deliana. So I have four Delianas. In one week, I got three, okay? I got one from Primal, one from Ancients, one from Sacreds. Just to show you what it means to get a lot of dupes that, one, you don't want to empower, and two, even after you empower them, even after you're filling your Faction Guardians, even after you're selling a couple of them, you still have dupes left if the game decides to screw you. That's why they really need to find a much better option for the token trader, guys. Why not put a Newt in there? Why not... Why not put a champion that can actually benefit the player base? You don't need to give us 1,000 OP champions. One of them is enough, okay? Just to show that you are actually willing to work on the token trader. Because as it is, it's just not showing it, you know? I'm trying to see uh, from where I have tons of dupes of different champions. Look at Elton. Plus four, two more copies on the side. Seal of the Drakes, plus four. An extra copy, right? Uh, I have a lot of different champions that I summoned quite a bit. Gurgodaugur, look at that. I can make him plus four, but is it worth doing it? Hell no. 
I'm going to keep the other two just in case. As I mentioned, maybe they're going to empower somebody else in, a, in the future. At the Lizardmans, uh, I'm not doing too bad. Yes, I've summoned quite a few Skullords Vargals. I sold two of them. Look at Fushan, plus four. I have three more copies. I still haven't bought the one from the token trader. Another, another example right here. So when the game really decides to, uh, to go against you, basically to mess you up, you're going to be in trouble with all of the dupes that you are going to summon. You know, it, there isn't much that you can do about it. Tela Goremane, I sold three copies of this champion. I have a plus four and I have two more, right? So I know that I'm not the only one that is in this situation. If we're talking about these ones, I had so many Mother Sibels, guys. Probably I had the most out of uh, all of the champions, but I've sold a lot of them, right? So that's basically how... Uh, how the dupe system works at the moment is, is a very bad system. So they could make this rotation happen every month. At a pool of 20 champions, you have 200 plus legendaries or something like that in the game, right? It's not going to hurt you if you're putting this uh, on a monthly rotation with a pool of 20 legendary champions. One, two of them to be good, and that's it. You don't need to do all of them OP because let's be honest, they're giving you champions that are not OP, champions that are super average, right? So uh, that's kind of like my take on it. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe the token trader is fine as it is. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Personally, I just want to see that they're more involved with this stuff, you know. It's just the player in me, right? It's just the player in me that wants to see better stuff in, uh, in the game. But as usual, appreciate all of you guys watching. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.